Short leaves taste good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What's that you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. No matter how you take your hooch, we've got something ice cold and on tap. Now, serving it to you straight and unfiltered, here are Craig, Scott, and Dan. Yes, we are. Welcome in, everybody. The Unfiltered Gentlemen. Thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for drinking along. I am Greg, or that is Scott. Okay. And that is Dan. Hey. Scott's been watching some South Park. <laughs> <laughs> I got a song for you. <laughs> oh, God. Please, no. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. A special shout out to Los Angeles. Oh, wow. Mm. Bringing it back home. I guess uh, LA's a fan of the tournament. Oh, there it must be. It must be what it is. Everyone's a fan of the tournament. So uh, thank you, LA. Thanks for uh, Barcelona. Still up there on the charts as Damn. listeners. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hanging in there strong. So thanks, guys. Thanks. Uh, we got a lot to get to. Of course, we do have game two. Of our March Madness Hazy IPA tournament. Oh, shit. Got a new voicemail from a listener. All right. Yeah. Snaps. Beer Babe of the Week, a Tales from Uber, some booze news, and so much more. I think we just get right into it. Let's get into the competition. Let's get into the game. Let's do it. Let's get in to the tournament. Now yeah. let's talk a little bit about hops. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like we said last week. You can't have a tournament without tournament music. That's right. You mm-hmm. have to get your four quarters ready to play a <laughs> single quarter <laughs> That's right. of this song. <laughs> oh, God. Could you imagine if like NBA Jam was out now? It costs like $3 oh to finish God, a game. Dude. So, um, all right. You gentlemen have uh, Cup A and Cup B in yeah. front of you. Please start with Cup A and then move your way to Cup B. In the meantime, I'll tell everybody, last week, uh, it was Sad Ad- Sam Adams' New England IPA up against Modern Times' Orderville. And Orderville took the win from Sam Adams deep in the fourth quarter. They pulled away. Uh, this week, and, and sorry, they will face, uh, Modern Times will face New Belgium's Voodoo Ranger Juicy Hayes. The winner of this week will go up against Sierra Nevada's Hazy Little Thing, which is in first place. But in the meantime, we can't look too far ahead of the future, as the, as the coaches and players always say. We're just taking one game at a time. Looking at the gentlemen, they have some looks on their faces. <laughs> Analyzing. Yes. Does How's this game? <laughs> <laughs> Is the game close? Is it a pull away victory it's an interesting game uh, i'm trying to understand how, the close again yeah i'm mm. trying to understand how one team is coaching over here it's, <laughs> i don't know if it's the right way but <laughs> might be being coached by lebron <laughs> yeah <laughs> player slash coach mm-hmm. wasn't magic johnson almost a player coach at one point or something? he was he yeah was, he, was he was a coach, a coach. Yeah. like one of the worst coaches for the lakers in yeah. nba history <laughs> made del harris look good <laughs> he, <kinda did. laughs> I he love may magic. have been pre del harris that's right. He, I think he was right before. I think he was the interim before they hired Del Harris. That's wasn't right. He? I think so. Something like that. Uh, all right. Does anybody have a, a winner? Is anybody in the lead? Do we need to keep going back? I think for A more? is in the lead right now. Interesting. Oh. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go with B. Okay. Scott's taking B for the victory. Dan, are you sticking with A? There's no wrong answer here. Let's see, B's got a. T- they got one last shot here. Mm-hmm. At the buzzer, they put up the shot. Did it go in? Overtime. <laughs> I think it rattled out. Uh oh. Oh, rattled out. Oh, yeah. So it goes down to A. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. All right. So that means it comes to me for the tiebreaker. We're in overtime. I forgot to mention Burp Word of the Week is He's on Fire. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> if you're too young to get that reference, Google NBA Jam quotes. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm going to sip on some A right quick. Sipping on that A. <laughs> Sipping A. <laughs> okay. Uh, pretty dank. Yeah. A little bit of fruit in there, but mostly dankness. Yeah. Heading over to B. B's good, too. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that jump shot looked good. It's just, you know, for me, it just kind of rattled mm. out there. Mm. It's a good think, defense by A. I, th- <laughs> I think there's a winner. Uh, two very different skill sets mm-hmm. from these two different teams. Uh, they, they came together to play one really big game that went into overtime but in the end the last shot was made by b oh, Whoa. 
Sorry, Dan. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, so let me tell you who we were drinking. A is Berry Republic Through the Haze. Wow. Oh, shit. 6.4%, 30 IBUs, has a 3.79 on Beer Advocate, mm. and 3.75 on Untapped from the brewery. Oh, music's fading. We need way more music. Put in another quarter. That's right. Or five. Or four, yeah. <laughs> from the brewery, they say, the deliciously crushable IPA emphasizes all the awesomeness of Vic's Secret, Citra, and Hollertop Blanc Cops, paired with a dry malt profile. Grapefruit and tropical fruit it's aroma. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Dan in the nice. clutch. <laughs> Dan nice. in the clutch. Man. Grapefruit and tropical fruit aromas set the stage for a huge citrus explosion of flavor on your taste buds without all the bitterness onward through the haze. And your winner going up against Sierra Nevada's hazy little thing, Firestone Walker's Mind Haze. Oh. Ooh. 6.2% 40 IBUs has a 4.01 on Beer Advocate, 3.85 on Untapped. We have had this on the show, but I'll read it again. From the coast of California comes Mind Haze, a free spirited beer made to elevate your perceptions, juicy yet balanced, hazy yet lasting, and loaded with an imaginative array of tropical hop, hop flavors. In the words of brewmaster Matt Brindelson, Mind Haze offers the best of what you expect from a hazy IPA. Reading's getting hard. But we're going about it a little differently, and that's what gives Mind Haze its own unique signature. We're finally ready to do a hazy IPA the Firestone way. It's got cashmere, mandarina uh, in the kettle, and dry hopped with Eldorado, Idaho 7, Azaka, Mosaic, and cashmere. Yep. Mm. Just want to repeat, there are no losers here. No. They're all winners. They're, Especially they're all getting winners. into this part of the tournament, it seems like it's getting really... Really tight. Yeah. So uh, you know, last week, uh, Sam Adams clearly had weed killer in it, and we all tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> that so, is true. Yeah. yeah so and this is, it. it's getting a little rough. Yeah. Uh, Everybody's getting a trophy. Yeah. That's that's right. right. This was Barry Public coming at number five versus Firestone at number four. So now it'll be the one versus four. And uh, next week we'll have number two, New, Bel- New Belgium Voodoo Ranger against number three, Modern Times Order. Oh, Can't wait. Boy. Here yeah. we go. So one, four, two, and three. Those winners will face each other to find out the winner of our 2019 March Madness Man. Hazy IPA Tournament. Cool. You're right. There is no loser. This is delicious. Oh, yeah. I think, beers. I think what did it for me without Mine Haze is a little bit of what did it for Orderville last week was the lingering. Oh, yeah. And I like that you really get the juiciness out of the hops. Mm. Yeah, I think that was for me too. I think uh, you could definitely taste those. Like that one is bolder. Yeah, but it kind of felt like yeah. I think I want a little cleaner this time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Through the haze, ironically with that name, is definitely a little cleaner. Yeah, I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I went dirty. Yeah, (laughs) I think that's what I did with the IPA last year. I was like, everyone bold is gonna win. (laughs) Bolder go better. Go bolder, go home. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, let's see here. 30 IBUs versus 40. Well, Firestone had more IBUs in it. Interesting. Um, all right, cool. Well, that is uh, that is the tournament for this week. Like I said, next week we'll have uh, more action, and it's only going to get hotter and closer and sweat. Oh, wait, no. Uh, <laughs> funner and drunker from here. That's right. That's right. All right, we've got some crotch talk. Like I said, we have a voicemail, some booze news, tales from Uber. Let's start things off with a little bit of crotch talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. Uh, I don't know if I... Well, I do have a little bit of grievance, I guess. Uh-oh. Not, not much, though. It still I involves might. beer, so it's not... But you can, uh, you can clean things up with a real grievance. <laughs> I got to check out the local Dave & Buster's had their soft opening last week. Oh, did you really? Yeah, and uh, I got some like VIP invite thing, which like so did 8,000 other people. Oh, shit. Like, you had to sign up, and it was like a VIP invite. And it did cut it off at one point, but man, it was crowded. I bet. Uh, the good news is we got a bunch of free food and a bunch oh. of free video games. Nice. Cool. Yeah, they give you like $20 worth of uh, gameplay. And they had like a little buffet set out. It wasn't their normal food. It was just like a little buffet of, you know, buffet-like foods. Um, they had specials on beer, $2 beers all night. Ooh. The only problem was all the weed killer beers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they, they're no longer going to be macro beers. They're weed killer <laughs> beers. Weed killer beers. <laughs> yeah. Did, was, did they have any like stone or anything? They well, had? you could get the craft. Oh, but that was It was not the $2 special. Uh, it was the uh, bastards. They it, always do that. It was the $7 special <laughs> for the craft beer, which uh, not the worst because they were the tall. We were getting the 22 ounces. It was funny. The lady friend goes up to order first. She's like, do you want the, the tall or the, the regular? 
I was like, ask the amount of ounces. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember we talked a few weeks back. Yep. And he's like, oh, it's 22 versus whatever. I was like, tall. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we had some fig mountains, figure out a mountain there. So that oh, was good. There you they go. also had some stone. Uh, they had some firestone stuff on tap. Cool. Uh, unfortunately, places like that are still ran by the weed killer beers for the most part. So, <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. But it was fun. We got a lot of uh, games to play and a lot of, we had a few uh, beverages. Definitely got hydrated. We were there with uh, Nick and Coley from Booze League fame. Oh, okay. Well, Nick from doing really bad at our fantasy football <laughs> fame. <laughs> That's right, man. And then Coley of Booze League fame. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and then also over the weekend went to the uh, Disneyland Food and Wine Festival, as we're apt to do every year, and had a lot of beer. There was a Blacksmith Black IPA that I had that was phenomenal, and I uh, had a couple of the Carl Strauss offerings, as I usually do. And we did a uh, like a little class, like a guided whatever with Backstreet Brewery. Uh, not to be confused with Backstreet Boys. <laughs> oh, same initials, BSB. Yeah, right. It was a little weird. <laughs> the guy walked in with his jacket on, and it just said BSB real big on his jacket. <laughs> I was like, "You may want to change that." Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, so we went and did that, and uh, it was fun. But and I hate I hate talking bad about craft beer, but the beer just mm. the BSB wasn't that great. Mm. Oh. Uh, we had a Berliner, which I'm all about the Berliners. I know you guys aren't. Uh, but this is a Berliner that had raspberry, like fake raspberry flavor added to it. Berlin. And Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And I hate raspberry more than raspberry. I hate fake raspberry. Um, and then they had this IPA that I. He's like, "Do you guys know what beer number one?" I was like, "Pale ale." He's like, "No, it's an IPA." I was like, "You are wrong. <laughs> you may think it's an IPA, but it drinks like a pretty good pale ale. It was real light and just." Didn't drink like an IPA. It was fine. It, like if you'd have told me it's a pale, I was like oh, this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. But it's not even not, not that good. And then we had another one. He goes, "What do you guys think this is?" I was like, "I don't know. Is this like infused with vodka or something? Like it's got some weird after flavor, like a like an alcoholic aftertaste. Not quite like dice tall or whatever." Uh-huh. Um, and so finally, he's like, "Oh yeah, this is our certified gluten free beer. Oh jeez, <laughs> not made with barley and and grain and that." And I was like, "Oh, that's why it tastes weird." He's like, "And it's an IPA." I was like, "Sure, could have fooled me." <laughs> and he's like, yeah, "What do you guys think? Do you think this is good? Like, raise your hand if you think it's good, or tell me if you think it's bad. Like, I can take it." I was like, "I don't think I should tell him what I think of it." Right? Yeah, I was like, "I'm on. not gonna be a total dick." So I didn't. Yeah. I just didn't say anything. But it was really bad he's like yeah we've we've done a good job like making this gluten-free i was like no i wouldn't say (laughs) i wouldn't say that i guess compared to like gluten-free dog poop it's pretty good but uh (laughs) this it tastes like a clearly gluten-free or something wrong with it beer and i guess they they make it like rice and other gluten-free ingredients which makes me think like does that just make it rice wine i.e sake oh yeah sake with hops in it i don't i don't know how that works so bud light yeah, <laughs> and then he's like, "This one, the first gluten or like the first gluten free beer to go to market." I was like, "Well, that's also not true because uh, yeah. my sister's gluten free, and I've tried some of her disgusting beer <laughs> uh, I, a long time ago, so I know that's not accurate." It was yeah. just weird. Hey, she's supposed to give me some. She never did. Gluten free beer? Yeah. Oh, you won. Oh, <laughs> she's in the will. Oh, yeah. No just teacher. Uh, you might as well go for some weed killer at this point. <laughs> oh <my laughs> that gluten free shit is awful. So um, how drunk do you think you were? Me? In the, yeah, the, yeah. How old? How drunk did he think you were? Oh, they, they, not drunk enough. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I was not telling drunk. you this. It was the first one to do it. Yeah, like, get the fuck out of <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, I was. I was not drunk, which was the problem. And he's like, "Oh yeah, this was going to be our red ale, and then we'd ran out, so we had the gluten free <laughs> ale." I was like, "Oh, I would have much rather had your red ale." Yeah, no <laughs> so kidding. disappointed that I paid forty fucking dollars for this <laughs> times two. Me plus the lady friend. Oh man, yeah. So it was very dis- like last year we got to do. I think I talked about it on the show. We got to do um, uh, Sierra Nevada tasting at there you Disneyland. Go. It was great. Uh, the, the brother was there. Uh, Grossman can't think of his first name at the moment. I've been drinking, and he told us all about the beers, and he answered all kinds of questions for us, and uh, questions you wouldn't think the owner's brother might answer you know like he's just a really cool guy okay and this guy brought his mediocre at best beer (laughs) and then started telling us like yeah we used to can and bottle and then we decided we would contract brew instead because that's where the money's at it's like or you have no marketing team (laughs) that could be the other so i should stop talking shit i don't 
<laughs> prefer to talk shit about uh, craft breweries, but it just it was weird. I was disappointed that I paid so much money for such yeah. not good beer. Yeah, I really... wonder if maybe the guy was a little nicer, you wouldn't have been so like. You if know, he was a little what? nicer and it wasn't eighty dollars for crap beer, was mean. no, he wasn't mean. He, he was a little full of himself. At one point, he's like, "I just like to focus on what I do best, and that's brewing." And I was like, "Well, you may need to reevaluate <laughs> something, <laughs> uh, especially this gluten free crap." <laughs> so. You're uh, thinking a lot of quips there. <laughs> <laughs> you had like an answer for everything you were saying. <laughs> it was really bad because I was like mouthing things to the lady friend. I was like, he's like, what do you guys think? Isn't this good? I was like, fuck no, it's not. You know, and so I was like, I got to stop. So uh, nice, nice enough guy, but uh, focus on normal beer and, and yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll stop there. Any other grievances? <laughs> <laughs> I will say we had some really good food at the event. Like they had some, uh, you know, specialty foods to pair with the the booze and all that stuff, and had some like chili rellenos with a Mexican lager, and it was really good. So right. there were yeah. some really good aspects of the day. <laughs> I guess the only grievance I was going to bring up had to go with Dave and Buster's, and it was that I really wish that that period of time where kids aren't allowed was a little bit longer. Only because uh, I think they kick them out around 10 o'clock. Is that what it is? There's yeah. a time? Where they... Yeah, there's okay. a time where the f- kids finally have to go home. But it's like, I don't know. I kind of thought that was like the appeal. You see the commercials. It's all these dudes apparently yeah. right after work. It's all these drunk bros. Yeah. 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 Or with, you know, with all their coworkers or whatever, all getting drunk after, you know, working for the man. And mm-hmm. they want to play some games and get drunk, yo. Right. Win some tickets. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to worry about some little shit. Yeah. Around. I think nothing makes going to Dave and Buster's more lamer than waiting for some kid to finish playing Mario Kart so you can go play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like it's hey, true. It's like, I want to take a picture my my driver's license on Mario Kart with the beer in my hand. Like you can't do that, kid. Like get out of here. Yeah, I've actually I think I've been to a Dave and Buster's where they had like an adults only section. Is that right? Like there was like pool tables and like they had a bar that was just in that area. Um, I think this was Dave and Buster's. Like they had the regular Dave and Buster's. But then it was like, this little area is only for big kids, right? a.k.a. drunks. <laughs> and that was nice. And I realize I'm kind of in the minority here. I'm sure most people my age probably do have children, and it's like, hey, well, I got to bring them, and they're going to play That's games true. with me. And- this is how I get drunk. Yeah. I got to take my kids to play games. Exactly. It's like, where's my sanctuary? You yeah. guys are bringing your kids everywhere. Are you bringing them to breweries? Or yeah, bringing them to- two-year-old's party at a brewery. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Where can I go get drunk and, like, show my ass? And nobody has to worry about, <laughs> oh, there's a child here. Like, oh, <laughs> shit, man. Put that ass away. I know. <laughs> God. Oh, man. And the funny thing about this, Dave and Buster's, there's a Chuck E. Cheese literally across the street. Oh, really? Yeah. So take your kids and go across the street. They've got pizza and beer there as right. well. Uh, Dave and Buster's, and I, I'm sad to say, is slowly becoming the new Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. It really is. I, I'm going to say that. It's true. It's damn true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other uh, grievances? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp. After chirp, that yeah. one. Yeah. No, that's fine. We're we don't all have, down now. We don't always have to have grievances. Uh, after, after listening to that, man, life is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's worse than kids at Dave and Buster's. Oh, man. That's right. Yeah. yeah. When you're trying to get drunk and show your ass. That's right. Oh, yeah. Having kids just ruins it's it. Like running out of places man. to do it, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me. I, I usually just go around the schools. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Bring yeah. the ass to them, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Oh, I like that they, idea. They, they want to go to Dave and Buster's. Hey, I saw that man at my school today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crossing guards in the area just have restraining orders on standby <laughs> for when Scott shows up. Getting drunk, showing your ass. Like, keep your ass out of my Dave and Buster's. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, shit. Okay, old man. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, speaking of drunk, we have a voicemail from listener oh, Mike. Oh. He oh. called us the other night and, uh, well, I, I, won't even, I won't spoil anything. I'll okay. listen to it. Hey, Wankers. I'm only calling for Dan. Oh. Because I'm going to fucking bring him into the sour beer oh. spectrum. <laughs> Tell him to go to Costco, get a bottle of the North Coast Berliner Weiss with cranberry and quince. Oh. He's going to love it. <laughs> also, uh, I don't know. Tell those people <laughs> that, uh, five threads that she's got really nice eyebrows <laughs> see ya bye <laughs> 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 my favorite part was him i hope he's okay he might have fallen at the end <laughs> he may have done a pelvic thrust at the end i of think that. so or he showed some kid his ass I don't know. <laughs> uh thanks mike for calling in 
Mike had been talking about going to Five Threads and that somebody there had really nice eyebrows. So there was a little oh. bit of context to that. But uh, and a Eugene God, Levy look at the panel? eyebrows on that girl. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at those caterpillars. That's funny. Woo. I'd like yeah. to motorboat those eyebrows. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Well, we turned that creepy. Yeah, we sure did. Yeah. Um, so sour beer, eh? <laughs> apparently, apparently, we need to go to Costco yeah. and get the uh, North Coast Berliner with cranberry and something else. Yeah, I, I got it. Only Dan. Man. Only yeah. Dan. Only Dan, yeah. Yes. Apparently. I guess- We'll we'll bring it in here and just watch you drink it. Yes, yeah, no kidding, huh? Yeah, cranberry. I don't know. I'm not on my period or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's for infections. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I but I'm glad to hear it's not your time. I'll tell you what, Mike. I'll, I might take you up on that. There you go. Check it's it a out. challenge. All right, all right. Mm-hmm. Dan, do you have a Costco card? No, I don't. Oh, okay, we'll we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll we got one. It. We'll. Uh... Yeah. I'll just stand outside the store and look sad. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone will buy me a beer. <laughs> We've got the long beard going. Just wear like a shitty shirt, you know. <laughs> like, we'll work for Berliner Vice yeah. or something. Yeah. We'll stand here for cranberry beer. Yeah, exactly. Right, old dirty bastard don't, on the yeah, back. Don't put don't put the work part on your sign because you don't know what they want you to do. Oh, that's yeah. true. That's true. It's true. People man. are weirder than me. Rules sometimes. of the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks to Mike for leaving yeah. a voicemail. And if you guys have a voicemail to leave us, uh, maybe some sour beer suggestions for Dan. And don't forget, Scott hates him too. Yeah. Uh, 805-538 beer two three three seven. Please leave us some voicemail. And I got a Costco card, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here we go. This is uh, a <laughs> He's gonna just fill up his cart with all the beer they got there. <laughs> I know, right? That'd be fun. That would be fun. I got some good beer at Costco. They do. I just picked up a couple of uh, parabolas. Oh, mm, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, wait, was it parabola or sukaba? God, I get them all. Okay. Maybe it's sukaba. Hey, either or. It's one of those two. God, I can't remember now. But uh, yeah, at Costco, they're only eight bucks. Th- there's a grievance. I can, if I can go back, I do have a grievance. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the Costco, I'll, I'll, I'll just call them out right now. The Hit Costco in Westlake. That's oh. my fave. They, used, they don't have the, the good. That's where I just the, got it from. Really? Oh, yeah. Where? It's in the corner. It's no. literally in the corner. I looked all over for it the other day. I couldn't find anything. I was there. just there on Friday, and they had whatever was, it was I was saying they had. When, when, oh, I was there Saturday. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's you me. took so, it. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. It, <laughs> Did you take it all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the beer section. Yeah. Literally in the corner. Like, it's a little tucked. There's the boxes of the, the barrel-aged beer from Firestone. Well, my bad. Yeah. yeah. They I, also had some uh, packs from Firestone. Uh, some there's a three pack of sours for eleven bucks. I don't know if you saw that one. I'm I sure you skipped sour, right over yeah. it. Sours, you saw sours. Your eyes just glazed. Yeah, maybe that's so. what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I guess Costco has a grievance against me now. I guess so. <laughs> that place you keep showing your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna need to leave you. We need you to leave the beer section. <laughs> He's like, well, how else are you gonna tell it's me? You look at his card. It's a picture of his ass on there. <laughs> I got my card in my ass. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to prove it to me. <laughs> oh, Damn. God. Uh, all right. Old Timey Word of the Week. A lout. L-O-U-T. A lout. Mm-hmm. It's a clumsy, stupid fellow. <laughs> hey, look at that lout in Costco showing his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. Oh, man. Oh, God. All right. Definitely not a lout. <laughs> oh. No one could blame you for bed swerving. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. It is indeed. Our beer babe this week, her name is Autumn, and uh, Scott, take notes. You can find her on the Instagram at the PGH underscore brunette. Oh, oh man. And brunette is spelt B-R-E-W. Oh, come on. N-E-T-T-E. <laughs> I, it, it's worth all the tricky uh, lettering. I like that spelling yeah. better. You like what? The, the spelling better. Right. But Scott's never going to remember it. So no. the PGH underscore B R E W N E T T E. And like Dan says, it's worth the time oh, invested. Yeah. yeah, write it down, take a picture. Yeah, all that good stuff. Uh, and this one, she's drinking a Hop Culture Juicy Brews late night. Oh, no, she's at the Hop Culture Juicy Brews late night beer fest uh, at Cinderland's Beer. Interesting. Cool. Uh, so go follow her at the PGH underscore brunette on the Instagrams. All right, we got some news to get to, but before we get to the news, we've got a Tales from Uber. Does your cabbie make you queasy? <gasps> it's Tales from Uber. From me? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. It's what you tell me. Okay. Hope um, it doesn't involve your ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's only Costco. Oh, okay. And Dave and Buster's. Um, this is a early morning run I was doing, so it's still dark out, and there's a couple of streets in uh, Thousand Oaks mm-hmm. um, where you I noticed once they turned off one of the main streets onto 
the residential area. There's no, there's no street lights. Yes, there are definitely some of those in, in Thousand so, Oaks. Yeah, for, yeah, Southern my, California for you non-locals. So, right. Ventura County. Yeah. And Thousand Oaks has been on our our thing for the t- you know, listeners. So. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anywho, um, so I turn on the one street, I'm th- and I'm thinking right away, wow, this is a really dark neighborhood. But I had to turn on to another street. So when, once it's I turn- It's dark in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a heel said yeah. in the back seat. Oh, wow. And once I turn on to the other street, which is even darker, all of a sudden there's two police cars blocking the street. Oh, God. And so I I just stopped because the, the passenger, the rider, was farther down the street. So I stopped and I'm waiting. I'm like, should I cancel? And I, usually, you know, a rider, if you guys know Uber, if you're a rider, you know that you can see where your driver is. Right. So I waited there for a few minutes. Finally, one of the officers comes to the car. Uh, so he wants to know what I'm doing there. And I said, you know, well, he goes, do you live here? I go, no, I'm an Uber driver. I'm going to pick up and I give the person's name. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, okay, well, hold on. So he goes back and they're talking back and forth. He goes back. He goes, hang on a second. I said, can I just call her? Let her know I'm down here. He goes, nope. He goes, she might be part of the investigation. Don't call her. Oh, all right. I'm like, okay. Hey, you could be the getaway. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, how do we know that she's not calling you t- to be the, her getaway driver? Well, we'll like, like, I don't know. You're yeah, right. I said, I don't what know. What happened I, you know, here? Uh, and Well, I, then I heard two other officers talking to each other and- it's kind of weird. It, to me, after a while, it kind of sounded like a prank. But the guy said, it, what I overheard was, so what happened was the guy got home, went into his house. When he came back, his car was gone, and mm. his neighbor's car was in this in the driveway where his car was. Okay. And they were focusing on this one car, you know, right on the side of the street. So anyway, I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting <laughs> for... It was like 15 minutes. I waited. Jeez. And I, you know, the guy kept he kept coming back and forth. He came back. He goes, you know, thanks for your patience. And I said, you know what? Why don't I just cancel? And you know, he goes, nope, nope. He goes, just just hang on. Don't do anything because we oh. want to make sure. And well, make sure you check out, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing. He's like, you know, I, I mean, need some ID. I, I was waiting for some him to ask me for my ID. He never did. Weird. Because um, stupid on his I, part, I showed you my ass. So. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, like, you're the Costco oh, guy. <laughs> you're that guy. <laughs> I saw you. They're not at Costco. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, after a while, finally he comes back. He goes, "Okay." I, he said, "You know, things are all clear. You can go ahead and go in." And but and then as I drove into where the rider was, there's like five more cop cars in there. I'm like, "You guys like seven or eight cop cars for a stolen vehicle?" They're rolling and, deep. Uh, yeah. And then when I talked to the rider, she was like, "Yeah, it was weird. They just like all of a sudden you see flashlights in the backyard." You know, and the, and the, the officers, and then uh, the person she's she goes. I'm not going to say any names. She was a talker. She talked the whole way. It was like a 20 minute ride, and she's mm-hmm. yapped the whole time. She's I I have to admit, one of the guys in the house does deal drugs, so we we're afraid that they were coming to arrest him. And you know, blah blah blah, and all this. And she goes, but when the, when the guy's mom came up to my to the room where we were in, and she said the cops were wanting to talk to Melissa, and and that was the person's name. Um, now we know. Yeah, and we'll call her Melissa. Right. Yeah. Which was her name anyway. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, it's kind of a weird thing. The names have not been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> no. Not at all. <laughs> Figure out her last name, guys. Yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Well, glad your butt's still set. Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm okay. Costco's not so I was bad, like, I, I kept wanting to leave. I go, you know what? You want me, you know. But nope, you guys just stay where you're at, sir. All right, we'll do. They go, we don't know if you maybe should, they're, you're a getaway guy and, and all this. Yeah, like, I okay. could be. Yeah. But don't worry, I drive slow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, want a beer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a couple over yeah. here. Here, this one's open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Wow. All right. Well, yeah. You're such a fugitive now. Yes, I am. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on to some booze news. <laughs> Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. Yes, it is. Uh, former governor and brew pub entrepreneur John Hickenlooper launches his presidential bid. Uh, I know, it sounds like a fake name. This guy was the governor of Colorado. He also opened up a pub in Denver. Uh, why is it Wine Coop? My thing's not loading. Yes, Wine Coop Brewing in 1988. Uh, I, if there's a presidential person we need to get behind, I think it's the guy who's who's making beer. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll vote for him. Yes, we can. Or uh, yes, we can drink. So <laughs> um, he's joining the crowded field of Democratic candidates and hoping to make everybody drunk again. There you go. Make America there drunk you go. again. I'll wear that hat. Mata. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Mata. <laughs> <laughs> make America drunk again. Yeah, I'm all over that hat. That hat. Uh, what else? Oh, <laughs> a New York man. 
tried to fake his own abduction to avoid paying Super Bowl bills. Mm -hmm. New York State police found 60-year-old Robert Brandell on Wednesday afternoon with a rope tied around his neck <laughs> and duct tape around his hands and ankles while in the backseat of his Ford F-150 parked on Niagara County Road. Brandell told the cops that he had picked up two guys who were in the same Super Bowl squares group as he was a couple of days earlier. When the men entered the truck, they flashed a pistol and stole Brandell's $16,000 payout that he had just collected from the squares game. The robber supposedly then drove him around for two days and left him tied up in his vehicle. The troopers who talked to Brandell found the whole situation to be quite unbelievable. <laughs> After some brief investigating, discovered that it was the alleged victim of the story who was the real thief. Brandell had apparently made up quite a few names for himself in the aforementioned squares pool. I love that. It's like, oh, I wanted more than the two squares. So <laughs> yeah. uh, my name is Brandell, and oh it's Melissa, <laughs> and it's a guy who shows his ass at Costco. <laughs> Uh, the fact that there I think was they drove him to Thousand Oaks. Not I think so. The fact that there was a squares game involved at all probably uh, not the only true part of the story. It was probably the only true part of the story. Uh, and he had not paid his fair share of the fifty thousand dollar payout. <laughs> oh my god! Mm -hmm. Unsurprisingly, he wasn't able to come up with the money he needed to, and decided that his plan was a better option. He's now being charged with a felony first degree scheme to defraud and misdemeanor of falsely reporting an incident. Wow. Yes. Classy guy. Didn't and, he watch Fargo? Like, I mean, that's what happened in Fargo. The guy tried to, like, fake all these abductions and everything, <laughs> and then he, he ended up, what, getting busted in the end? Like, come on, man. I uh, would it's have like, to admit that I've not seen Fargo. <laughs> yeah, what the Christ. <laughs> and I, sorry, I haven't If it's either. a movie and it's not funny, I probably haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm really Is it a movie though. or a show? It's a movie. Oh, yeah. Well, it ended up it being is a now show. It's a show, right. oh, yeah. Well, but originally a movie. It's haven't like, seen either. So. Oh, yeah, Don Tootin. <laughs> <laughs> that's Wayne's World. Huh? That's Wayne's World. Did you say that no, I'm too? I'm joking. <laughs> uh, every extra pint of beer takes 15 minutes off your life. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, bad news for us. Again? Again. <laughs> yeah. The sobering guideline comes courtesy of a new paper studying the drinking habits and health of almost 600,000 people. It found that when 40 year old participants and more than, had more than five drinks in a week, their risk of early death rose steadily. Well, I'm well over 40, so I'm good. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how many drinks a week would you guys say you had? Um, get a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the abacus out. Uh, roughly, uh, roughly drinks a week. Yeah, I'd say probably about three or four. Honestly, really? Yeah, a not week. Too much. Yeah. Wow, you're a better man than I. <laughs> I was gonna say that's an hour for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do usually about three a night mm. is is my average. Oh, okay. And Good there'll be like Lord, one or week? there might be one or two nights might be. That I don't drink, but on I think, average, like I think three. I, I probably, but I do it all one day. So <laughs> yeah, you're the type. It's funny, Nick and Nicole. The aforementioned Nick and Nicole, they're like this, where they don't drink during the week. Yeah, but they get shit faced during the weekend. Yeah, like Friday comes around Friday night, and it's like they just don't stop drinking till Sunday afternoon. Oh, fuck. Like you hang out with them on the weekend, and it's, it's a party. But man, are they drinking hard. <laughs> and then all through the week, like when we went to Dave and Buster's in the middle of the week, and they were like, oh, this is so weird for us. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this is pretty normal for me. <laughs> <laughs> we're all just like, I'll always have a few beers. Mm -hmm. I'm never looking to get like crazy hammered. Oh, yeah. There you go. There's like a nice old buzz. I don't know. Scott, have you ran yeah, out of fingers I'm, and toes? Yeah, I mean, think, you don't have to answer. I'm, if it's... Well, I'm kind of like them because you know I'm working two jobs during the week, but yeah. then once I'm off my two job routine, it's just like I got one in my hand the whole time. Free for all. Yeah. yeah. So, good lord, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Well, on my days off, I'm usually drinking and staggering. That's that's uh, <laughs> pretty accurate. All right, here's a more exact breakdown. As leading scientists in the field of understanding public risk. Uh, for a 40-year-old, every glass of alcohol above the suggested weekly limit, which is five, shortens their life by 15 minutes. Oh, okay, so I'm well above that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if a 40-year-old drinks three glasses of wine a night, for example, he loses two years off of his life. What? Yeah. What? No, I've seen other articles where it says wine is healthy and makes yeah. you live longer. Well, then it says, on the other hand, a recent study found that if you're over the age of 90, uh -oh. drinking two glasses of beer or wine a day gives you a better shot at living longer. I'm good then. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, okay. so where's the fucking balance in that? There is no balance. Just keep drinking. That's just, right. Just try to make it to 90 and then just start just, getting hammered. Just do what you're going to do. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Uh, we're all going to die. Who needs a liver anyways? A what? <laughs> Mine ran away years ago. <laughs> Uh, what else? California. Us Californians have something to be proud over. 
named one of the most sinful <gasps> states of the union. A but, survey by Wallet Hub says California is near the top of the list, and the list is not very nice. Uh, the results show that we're one of the most sinful states in the U.S., and it's something that not everyone's proud about. Nevada tops the list of the most sinful states, and Vermont is the state with the most virtue. Ooh. Many Californ- many people aren't surprised to learn Californians are living in sin. When it comes to lust, we're number two in the nation. <laughs> <laughs> And we like to look good in the Golden State, which explains why we came in third for vanity. Feeling jealous? That makes sense because we're number nine in that category. (laughs) So uh, congrats to us for being the most sinful states. They have a whole breakdown of like how much we drink and it's, uh, I like to have fun in California. How do they know all that? I don't know. That's ridiculous. (laughs) I don't don't know if I buy all that. Uh, I'm okay with it. Uh, (laughs) Does it bother me? Yeah. In the excesses and vices rank, though, we're only 47. I'm surprised about. 47 in the nation? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. So look at that. What makes one sinful anyways? Um, here's here's the different categories. Um, anger and hatred, <laughs> jealousy, excesses and vices, greed, lust, vanity, and laziness. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yes. All of the above. Mm-hmm. So the right. most, most sinful was Nevada, followed by Florida. Well, because their main city is named Sin City. That's so. true, yeah. yeah. And then there's Florida because it's fucking Florida. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. Come on. How yeah. did they not top the list in everything? Yeah, they have sex with alligators. <laughs> that's right. They're Come crazy on. out there. They're nuts. And then California, Texas, and Tennessee. That's the top five right Come there. Come on. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the bottom of the list, bottom five, uh, number 50 for Vermont, then Maine, North Dakota, Nebraska, Idaho. There you go. Hmm. Boring state. Keep, keep, <laughs> keep on sinning. Guess where I'm not living. Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> Those last five or, I just Or mentioned. I can move there and change their, their status. Oh, yeah. yeah. How are you not sinning if you live there? <laughs> right, yeah. What else is there to do? <laughs> nothing. Jesus. Absolutely nothing. I don't know. Uh, Scott, have you been driving any cargo ships lately? As a matter of fact, just recently, I took the helm of a cargo <laughs> ship. Were you in Korea? As a matter of fact, oh, I was. Okay. Rush- Why do you ask? <laughs> a Russian cargo ship. Comrade, uh, sailing under the direction of an inebriated captain, smashed into a major highway oh, bridge yeah. near the port of Busan, South Korea, during the afternoon rush hour. That bridge jumped right out in front of me. <laughs> Don't you hate when that happens? Oh man! Uh, damaging the vessel and tearing a hole in the bridge's steel structure. Mm-hmm. Uh, the vessel was later detained by the Korea Coast Guard, and it fled the scene. Or after it fled the scene, <laughs> <laughs> all for Uber. Yeah. So according <laughs> to the news, the 370-foot Sea Grand had arrived in Busan. On Wednesday, set out for its home port of Vladivostok, Russia, you nailed it. carrying nearly three million pounds of steel coils when the accident occurred. Uh, it should have sailed north along the coast before making its way across the edge of across the edge of the Sea of Japan. Instead, it traveled just a couple of miles before inexplicably turning into a small bay oh. and heading straight for the <laughs> Guangan Bridge, a double deck structure structure that stands as the second longest span in the country. Wow! Yeah. KCG officials tracking regular ship traffic saw the deviation and radioed to the ship to turn around, but the captain appeared to neither speak or nor understand English well enough to respond. Uh, There is video thanks to an eyewitness. (laughs) It looks like the ship tries to reverse, but it's too late by this point to prevent a collision. (laughs) The crash takes out the Sea Grand's foremast and punches a hole in the bridge underside. Uh, There's also a close reading, which you can see the deckhand running away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they show a map of like what it was supposed to travel the path is supposed to take yeah. and it's just this you know it's supposed to be this kind of like straight line once you in- leave the bay it's a straight line out to sea <laughs> and what it shows is basically like a moon half moon shape or just like flips a bitch into oh, the next damn. bay and right into that bridge <laughs> see could use those bumps on the road, I think, you know, to kind of wake him up. <laughs> yeah. I think he just kind of leaned over and just <laughs> passed he, out there. He needed that lane assist. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, Captain, Captain. <laughs> they like went in the door and he's like knocked out. Like, oh shit. He tried to turn it around. They like uh-huh. called out to him, Hey, do you know you're deviating from the course? Like, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> this Bonka. man doesn't speak English. <laughs> yeah. Uh, though it's unclear whether he was actually at the controls of the Sea Grand at the time of the accident, the unnamed captain was still arrested on charges of sailing under the influence as the vessel's direction and safety are ultimately his responsibility. All the authorities also suspect the sea, the sea Grand struck a docked cruise ship as it's made, it, made its way out of Busan before hitting the bridge, a uh, portion of which will remain closed through the weekend as the damage is fully assessed. Boat Good job. to Busan. Yeah. 
Good job, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, don't get drunk and drive boats. Apparently, that's right. Mm-hmm. Captain Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> you and the captain make it happen. <laughs> yeah, they they found him leg up and everything. So. <laughs> Passed mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Oh, geez. How many years ago I was driving an oil rig up in Alaska? Oh, <laughs> was it the Valdez? Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, yeah. What do you know? <laughs> oh, I that just was... got my license back. Yeah, and back in the early 1900s when you were on the, the uh, Titanic and <laughs> mm-hmm. struck yeah. an iceberg. That was a bad one. That was a bad one. It was pretty bad. Yeah. A couple people lost. One or two. Uh, one or two. Yeah, they're fine. They were old. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they are now. <laughs> All right, that's it for us. Thank you all for listening and hanging out with us and uh, joining us in our tournament. Next week, we will have more Hazy IPA tournament action as the fun continues. Uh, In the meantime, you can find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com. If you go there and click on bracket, in case you forget where we are in our bracket, you could uh, see all the latest updates. You can find us on the social medias at theunfilteredgentleman, except for Twitter, at unfilteredgents. And you can leave us a voicemail, just like listener Mike did, 805-538-BEER. That is 2337. I think that's everything. I hope everyone is staying hydrated and looking out for Scott's ass. Shield your eyes. Wear sunglasses or, or maybe a welding mask. <laughs> Don't go to Costco. Don't go to Costco. That's right. Uh, and on that note, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.